I have uncovered the most common money pit that 62% of you will fall into. In fact, I was once in this money pit myself and it ended up costing me over $50,000 throughout my lifetime. Now, this is not your typical financial advice like stay out of credit card debt. No, this video is about a common financial mistake. So if you are in your 20s or even your early 30s wondering where all of your money is disappearing to, stick around until the very end because I'm gonna take you on a journey and break down exactly how I found what the most common money pit around it was. It all starts with college. In 2013, I finally graduated and got my college diploma. I really only stuck with college because of two factors. Number one, my mother was very adamant that I needed it. And number two, so were my high school teachers. In fact, it almost felt like my teachers were trying to brainwash me or something. But why? Because college is an assembly line, taking raw ambition, this valuable material mined from young minds and converting it into the perfect corporate product, an employee. If our school systems were to nurture this ambition and instill independence into our youth, then we would consistently see the most successful people disrupting major industries coming pretty much right out of high school. But this assembly line also doubles as a printing press for cash, allowing credit institutions to issue student loans, leaving even the most successful students with a bill that they have to pay for years. In fact, the average US graduate has $37,000 worth of student loan debt at 5.8% interest. Now, in my last video, I broke down how high the cost of living has gotten and how even having one decent job isn't enough to sustain a normal lifestyle. The crazy part is that in all my calculations, I did not factor in student debt. But is college the most devastating money pit around or is it just the starting place of our search? Clearly when presidential candidates are using college debt relief to get elected, it's a serious problem. But is it the most devious? Is it the most disastrous? I would argue, no, there are just too many important jobs in society that require higher learning in order to do them properly. I, for one, would not want my brain surgeon getting their degree from YouTube University. However, there are many, many more roles that can be learned from online education, but we can't ignore the engineers, the doctors, the electricians, all that require a formal regulated education in order to not completely ruin people's lives. But let's use college as a starting point and build out a spectrum. If college was on one side of the spectrum, it would be on the safe side, the supposed direct route to success no matter what. Even though we identified that for some people, college is a money pit. But if college is on the right side, what is the risky money pit? FOMO, the fear of missing out. Typically, this isn't really a money pit. It's more like a feeling you get when you see your friend's Instagram story and they're at a concert you weren't invited to. However, FOMO can become dangerous when wealth building opportunities are involved. In 2017, the world started going crazy over this underground investment tool called Bitcoin. It went from being worth $1,000 to nearly $20,000 in under a year couldn't turn on a single news channel without hearing about Bitcoin. This was when I first bought in. Luckily, it was only a few hundred dollars because shortly after that, Bitcoin crashed 45% and the exchange that I used to buy it shut down completely because it was a scam. FOMOing into any financial asset is not investing. In fact, the word that we'll use here to describe that is speculation. Speculating can be easily defined as the activity of guessing possible answers without having enough information to be certain. And before I realized that this was actually a money pit, I speculated way too many times to count and lost. But in the year 2020, during the stress of the pandemic, I started digging. I learned about the banking system, how the dollar works, where this stimulus was actually coming from, and it scared the fuck out of me. I learned about Bitcoin, blockchain, and crypto. I was starting to build a bit of an expertise, and at the right moment, I bought back in. This time, it wasn't speculation, it was an investment. And after paying close attention to the markets for the next year, I knew that a crash was imminent because there was cycles. So in May 2021, I saw a clear top signal. I sold 80% of my crypto and watch the market crash shortly after. I was put in that position to seize the opportunity because this wasn't FOMO. It wasn't speculation 
didn't either. I recognized the factors that made the money move and I seized the opportunity. And to this day, I see heaps of people online who did not see the clear signs and they got absolutely wrecked. But the thing about speculation is that sometimes total idiots get rich because this is such a high risk, high reward game. Anything can happen. There are thousands of people who bought Bitcoin back in 2010 and held on to it really knowing nothing about it and are now worth millions. They speculated, but this time they won. So when it came back to my search for the most devious and the most devastating money trap, it was clear that FOMO and speculating was not it. So I thought back to the spectrum. I thought back to college being on the right, FOMO being on the left. And it was clear that the most devastating money mistake had to be right in the middle. It had to be considered safe and yet rebellious at the same time. And in that moment, it was clear. It was 8 a.m. in Long Island, New York. On Black Friday, 2017, I woke up with a pounding headache. I ran to the bathroom and threw up immediately. My family was waiting for me upstairs to drive to New Jersey for Thanksgiving weekend. And I was hovering over the toilet, hung over. Got up, looked myself in the mirror, told myself, this is the last time. And that was the last time I ever got drunk. It is no secret that alcohol is damaging. And yet every weekend, young people, old people, get get together to drink and go out and party. And when I look back on the behaviors that cost me the most money, up until that point in my life, it was drinking by far. Because there are layers upon layers of cost, much more than just the price tag you pay for the alcohol at the liquor store. And these payments, they come with interest. Picture this, it's Friday night. You just finished a long week of work and your friends hit you up for a night out on the town. You grab a bottle for the pregame, you buy a few drinks at the bar, you grab food after the bar, you split up the Uber bill for the night, and this Friday night just easily costs you $100. But if you do this once a weekend, every single weekend for an entire year, this seemingly harmless habit just costs you over five grand. But the cost doesn't end there. Because after we drink this poison, our body doesn't just normally function the next day. Instead, we go through a recovery phase called a hangover. Because drinking is like using a credit card for your time. The more time you spend drinking, the more time you have to pay back the next day and with interest. Because the next day you cannot be productive. You'll call in sick, skip your workout, waste your entire day in a zombie-like state. Meaning that not only did you spend $100 the night before, but now you can't earn a single dollar today. For example, if you make $20 an hour and you miss out on an eight hour shift because you're hungover, that night has now cost you an extra $160. And you can start to see how this money pit will add up to $50,000, $100,000 or more over the course of a decade. There is exponential advantages to sobriety because the anxieties and stresses that we face in our life are numbed when you drink. They call it taking the edge off and it is the final layer that holds you back and makes this the money pit that I've been searching for. Stress and anxiety are natural indicators that something is wrong. These feelings tell your body and mind that you are behaving in a way or you are doing something that doesn't align with your goals and your purpose. When you're stressed and anxious, you need to figure out why and correct the course. This is very valuable. But if you just drink every time you feel stressed and anxious, you forget how to listen to your instincts. You just waste this superpower. Your inner voice will become silent and you will probably be broke forever. Anybody that wants to achieve massive success needs to cut out excessive drinking and never look back. And when I added up the bill on what alcohol had cost me, it was over 50 grand in going out and missing opportunities. And that's when I knew this is the money pit I had been searching for. Because 62% of 20 year olds and 30 year olds drink alcohol. It checks all the boxes. It drains your bank account. It wastes your time. It destroys your mental and physical health. Overusing alcohol is literally considered a disease. But many will argue that it's fine to have a few drinks here and there, maybe on special occasions. But what you will find is that the less you drink, the more negatively it affects you when you do. So if you are in your 20s or 30s, the best thing you can do for your financial future is to completely quit drinking altogether and just avoid this painfully common money.